Hey everybody, this is Shelby from Overeducated Senyal, and I am here with a very long overdue video. I am going to share with you my skin cancer journey. I think that this is very important because I am extremely diligent with sun protection and I actually got my skin cancer from something that a lot of people don't realize is a risk factor. So the story begins in 2012. It was the fall of 2012 and I remember because it was before a very special date with a guy that I ended up dating for months and before that date I was curling my hair with a curling iron. For one split second, the curling iron made contact with my forehead, right around here. It was very painful in the moment, but it only left a very tiny mark the size of a fingernail. So I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And I didn't treat it with anything like ointment because I wanted to look pretty for my date. And to be honest with you, I forgot about the entire thing probably within days because again, it was such a small little mark. Now that small little mark did remain with me as a scar. However, I hardly noticed it because it was so tiny. And so I just went on with my life for seven years. <laughs> Fast forward to my little sister's wedding. My big sister was doing my makeup and she was spending several minutes on this spot trying to cover it up. She finally said, this is the best I can do. We're not going to be able to cover that thing up completely. And that moment was actually revelatory for me because I didn't realize it needed to be covered up. I didn't realize that it had become so pronounced. Still, it hadn't grown large enough for me to care about it myself. Fast forward again to 2021. I was starting to make several YouTube videos and I began to find the scar rather distracting. It had grown to about the size of a penny and it was, depending on the angle you looked at it from, oh, hey, baby girl, it was shaped a little bit like a heart. Whenever I watched these videos back, I honestly could not focus on anything other than that scar. And so I actually tried to get rid of the scar using scar gel and scar patches. And I even made at least one YouTube video about that. But unfortunately, none of that worked. I thought the reason for this was that my scar was so old, it essentially had reached the point of no return. My scar would also bleed when I washed my face. When I washed my face, I put on the face wash or oil cleanser and face wash, and then I gently wipe with a washcloth before doing a final rinse. That gentle wipe with a washcloth was enough to make this thing break open and bleed. That made me think, oh my gosh, the way that I wash my face has traumatized and aggravated the scar for years to the point where it is irredeemable. And still, I just shrugged my shoulders and said, okay, I have just screwed up my forehead for life and I need to accept that. So I'm going along merrily with my life. And then the fall of 2022, I got a very short haircut. I'm going to have to tell you just a little bit about my hair loss right now for to put this in context. So I have had hair loss since around 2009, but I never sought serious medical treatment for it until I got a very short haircut in the fall of 2022. That made it pretty much impossible to cover up all of my thinning areas. As you can see, I normally pin my hair in many different ways in order to hide the areas of thinning. So I finally got an appointment with my primary care doctor 
and uh, she diagnosed me with androgenetic alopecia, which is also known as pattern hair loss. This is most commonly thought of as a guy disease, but actually women can get it too, and it is completely genetic. I could have got it from one or both one or both sides of my family. Interestingly, though, I recently learned that megadosing with V5, which I'd been doing since around 2009 for my acne, actually can aggravate androgenetic alopecia. So anyway, I had this appointment and I thought, fantastic, we've solved the mystery. We can start treating it. My physician was even consulting with a dermatologist who had access to all of the photos of my head, so there was no need for me to go 50 miles away to see the dermatologist. I was wrong. I ended up needing to go consult with this dermatologist in order to get really aggressive treatment started for my hair loss. It turned out to be a very fortuitous appointment though, and this is where you see the relevance. Of. While the dermatologist was looking at my hairline, she started asking questions about the scar on my forehead. I'm using air quotes for reasons you will soon learn. This dermatologist had seen a pattern of young, fair-skinned women coming in for whatever, and they would happen to have a non-healing scar that turned out to be a basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common type of skin cancer in the United States. I would think I would have to double check my research on this, but I think that annually there are more cases of basal cell carcinoma than there are of all other cancers combined. It's extremely rare for anyone to ever die from it, but it is very disfiguring. My lesion was very suspicious for a basal cell carcinoma. It was shiny and pearly and pink with rolled edges. And my favorite quote from the dermatologist was that bleeding when you wash your face is not normal scar behavior. So she ended up biopsying it at that appointment. And it turned out that I had a mixture of the infiltrative and nodular types of basal cell carcinoma. That's probably more information than you need, but it helped inform my doctor's decision to recommend Mohs surgery. Now, Mohs surgery for either very invasive skin cancers or skin cancers that are in very cosmetically delicate areas. This is because Mohs surgery spares more healthy tissue than other skin cancer surgeries. Other surgeries will take a very large area around the tumor in order to make sure that they have everything. Whereas in most surgery, the surgeon will remove one layer, make a microscope slide out of it, look at it under the microscope, determine whether he or she needs to take another layer and keeps going that way for however long it takes. With me, it took I believe three or four rounds, and each of these rounds is about 45 minutes. There's a very short period of time in which they're actually taking out tumor, but then you have to wait for them to, to make the slide, to look at the slide, to see other patients in the meantime, and then they come back to you. So I ended up being there for about four hours, I think. Because I just got home from work, I have two layers of tinted sunscreen on, so you can't see it very well. But I have a T-shaped scar in this area here. And I gotta admit, the first couple weeks of caring for it were really annoying. 
Now, I had brain cancer when I was a kid, so this wasn't that big of a deal, but I had to take take at least a week off from working out. I ended up taking two because my face is very important to me. I also had to change the dressing every day, which took a lot of time and also made it impossible to wear sunscreen. This is ironic because you really have to protect a wound that is healing from the sun. So I ended up having to try to wear hats, UPF 50 hats over this thing, but it's a little bit difficult when you have a bulky bandage right there. So that was not a lot of fun and I was very happy. It was all closed up and I did not have to wear a bandage anymore. However, although the T itself looked pretty good. It, the lines were fairly thin and nicely closed. My eyebrow was being pushed down and forward, so much so that it was nearly impossible for me to get sunscreen on my eyelids. I also had this flesh-colored lump right here. And so between those two things, I asked the surgeon at my follow-up what we could do to revise this scar. He took out some skin around here, which made an additional incision on the vertical line of the T. And it did bring my eyebrow up to a fairly acceptable level, and it made the lump right here disappear. However, I now have a lump right here in addition to, and it's a little bit difficult to see, I also have what I'll call some topographical irregularities. I have this area of elevation above my eyebrow, and then there is a bit of a crater above that. And then above the crater is a raised area of the vertical line. The rest of the vertical line is nice and flat. It's raised to underneath where the lump is. So at my next follow-up, I asked him what we could do about those things. We want to be very conservative and not create more issues. For now, he has just injected saline into this area with the idea being that hopefully the saline will stretch out that area before it drains away into my bloodstream and stimulate collagen remodeling. This will be aided by the fact that I use tretinoin. I was not using tretinoin for the first few months after my initial surgery. However, he did give me the go ahead at this follow up. That is where my story is at this point in time. I can give you updates later on if there are any and or you would like to get some updates. And the reason I've shared all of this with you is I think it might save you from going through a similar experience. I know that I myself hadn't thought to monitor my burn scar, but by the time of my surgery, my dermatologist told me that it had been entirely replaced by basal cell carcinoma. There was no scar left there. So why does this happen and what can you do to prevent it? Well, let's think back to why the sun causes mm -hmm. skin cancer. So the sun causes DNA damage and DNA is like the instruction manual inside each of your cells. It tells them how to behave, when to reproduce and how to reproduce. So when that instruction manual is mutated, it can cause a lot of things to go wrong. And if those mutations are in genes that control reproduction, cellular reproduction, you can very easily get 
dysfunctional cells that are reproducing uncontrollably. And that is what leads to a tumor. This is going to be especially pronounced with something like a burn because your skin wants to repair itself. So cellular reproduction is going to be happening at an even higher rate than it would be normally. Normally, I think your skin cycle is something like a month. And the more reproduction you have, the more chances there are for mutated cells to mess things up. You have an increased risk of skin cancer with surgical scars and really any kind of scar because in all of those cases, your skin is trying to repair itself. And, and the more your skin cells reproduce, the more chances there are for errors. So what can you do to make sure that this does not happen to you? Obviously, you don't want to get a burn or other kind of skin injury or scar. However, those things are not always avoidable. So what do you want to do in that case? In that case, you want to make sure you're getting prompt and appropriate treatments for the injury and that you're diligently treating it for, for as long as your provider instructs you to. And for the rest of your life, you need to be monitoring that scar for any changes in shape or size or other characteristics. Obviously, if those changes are in a positive direction, like for instance, the scar is fading in color, I would, would not be concerned. But if, for instance, your scar is growing, really, really, really need to get it checked out. I hope you found this video helpful. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a like. If you just feel sorry for me, please also give it a like. Uh, both of those are also great reasons to subscribe if you'd like to. I generally try to stick with skincare related content or health related content, and I hope you'd like to come along for the ride. If not, you could subscribe and just not hit the bell icon because the bell icon is what's going to notify you of any future videos. If you just hit subscribe without hitting that icon, which is what I actually do with a lot of channels, you are helping that channel out, but you're not getting bombarded with their notifications. Of course, you're not going to get bombarded with notifications from me anyway, because I only make, you know, one, two, three videos every now and then. I hope that you have an awesome day, night, whatever it is where you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye!